Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 8, Non-Infectious Disease and Disorders. This is video 24 and we're looking at kidney function dialysis. So in this penultimate video, we're going to be um, doing exactly the same sort of thing we did when we were looking at the ear and the eye and some of the technologies associated with correcting some of those disorders. This time we're going to be looking specifically at dialysis. So again, try and recall or go back and have a look at the structure and function of the different parts of the kidney, particularly the nephron and its role in filtering the blood and also in terms of reabsorption. And that's really what we're looking at now when we describe the technologies associated with loss of kidney function and also the process of dialysis. So you'll recall that the kidney is primarily a filter and also an organ for osmoregulation. So it, it enables us to keep an eye on things like water and salts and also reabsorption of smaller molecules like glucose um, from the filtrate that comes into the Bowman's capsules back through the tubules into the capillaries that surround those tubules as material is reclaimed by the body. Patients are unable to um, filter their blood effectively, then there has to be some alternate way to do that. Now we know that there's a couple of options. Of course, one is kidney transplant. And transplants always have some associated issues, um, matching the donor very carefully. Usually there's a suppression of the immune system to avoid um, any uh, rejection of the organ. And of course that can open uh, the patient up to various other complications. And so one other potential option for some uh, patients who have kidney disease or problems with uh, filtration through the kidneys is renal dialysis. And so effectively what's happening is instead of the blood being filtered internally, it's uh, extracted, filtered externally, and then put back in. So this is a process which cleans the body of the unwanted toxins. So especially we've sort of not talked about what we don't want. So things like urea, uric acid. These are the waste products that are part of the urine and we can't afford those to build up um, the levels of those to build up in the body. So whilst osmoregulation is a very important part of this process, it's also very important to recognize that the removal of wastes is one of the key functions of the kidneys. And the inability to do that, um, the buildup of excess fluids um, that can be a result of kidney failure can have quite significant consequences on individuals. So what we then need to do is basically we need to be able to duplicate the process of filtration that happens in the kidneys uh, externally. We need to set up semi-permeable membranes that allow material to move um, both uh, into and out of the blood. And there are a couple of different ways that dialysis works in order to um, effectively filter the blood. And those, those two main ways are peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis. The most common one that we tend to talk about is hemodialysis, which is basically um, designed to um, directly circulate the blood through the body outside of the body and back again. So that this is allowing basically the entire blood volume to be filtered in a certain period of time. Now, one of the challenges associated with this, it is, it is quite uh, time intensive. It takes a lot of time for the blood to come out, to flow around, to be completely filtered, uh, and then for the patient to, to disconnect and go home. And it has to happen on a regular basis. Constantly filtering this blood, this is a continuous process. So if we're not able to do that, the kidneys uh, functions levels are very low, then that means that this is not going to be able to happen on a, a regular enough basis. I think it's probably important for you to be able to identify some of the key um, processes that are part of dialysis. The key thing that you're looking for, of course, is how the, the dialysis process mimics what goes on uh, in the kidneys themselves. Okay, so this is this is a, a technology that's associated with a particular process that we're aware of that happens in the body that we're trying to duplicate outside of the body. Um, you can see here in, in the diagram um, that there are two kind of uh, methods for which this can work through a 
catheter uh, or through a fistula. And each of those uh, is going to be designed to um, help to get the blood out of the body, to run it through the filters and to come back again. The solution that, um, that is going to be running around the semi-permeable membrane is, is going to need to be one that uh, A, is continually uh, flushed. We want to create osmotic gradients. We want to create diffusion gradients. And so that we know that in diffusion, material will go from a high concentration to a low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So it's important that the dialysis is continually creating that whole um, a concentration gradient that allowing that natural motion. So we know that any substance is only ever going to move from one place to another by active or passive transport. It's either naturally going to move there through things like concentration gradient or it's going to have to actively be pumped. It's going to have to be pushed in those sorts of uh, areas. So uh, it's important that we're wherever possible that we allow, we take advantage of those passive processes, we allow that kind of continued uh, flushing, you can kind of see in the dialyzer here, uh, that continual flushing of um, the uh, region around the outside of the semi-permeable membrane to allow the blood to continue to um, exchange materials from uh, within to uh, without into where the dialysate is, is uh, circulating. So look, this is just a quick overview of um, how renal dialysis works. Um, think very much about how the kidney works and how what sort of substances are moving in different directions. And perhaps, again, as we've talked about previously, a summary table which allows you to put the function of the kidney and what it does in one column and the um, how renal dialysis works uh, in a second column. So you can make comparisons between similarities and differences that occur as both of these two processes are being carried out. Thanks for watching.